Okay, so this meeting is now being recorded and by continuing to be in this meeting, you are consenting to be recorded. So welcome everyone to our module three webinar for data 460, section 6980. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful summer so far. And uh, with this course, which you are getting so close to the finishing line and I just talking to, uh, just mentioned that few minutes back, uh, you know, you're close to the finishing line for this course, as well as your degree as well, right? All right, so um, we'll skip this adequates. I mean, we are still such a nice small group. And uh, so we can open up your videos. You can talk in this, uh, you can talk in between. Only thing is if there's any distractions around you, try to limit that or be on mute if that's the case, uh, but feel free to ask questions at any point in time. And if I'm not jinx this session, then we'll keep this session less than an hour, okay? We'll not really go above that. I hope hope uh, to keep it an hour. All right, so, and, and the next uh, webinar, which is going to be the, and the last webinar for module four um, is going to be two weeks from now. So please mark your calendar um, exactly uh, two Thursdays from now, we'll be meeting again, okay, for module four. All right, so what do we have planned today? Uh, we'll talk about computer vision. Once again, nothing theoretical. We'll try to just have the same similar type of practical approach that we took the last time. And, um, and I hope uh, it got some good feedback and I hope uh, it was really helpful. So I'll try to kind of keep up with that and make this uh, more um, you know, exciting and engaging kind of a conversation and session. So. Um, let's do that uh, for computer vision. And um, then we'll talk about uh, briefly about your assignment three, and then we'll get into any other questions or any questions that you may have uh, for this session, okay? All right, um, so before we go in deep into talking about computer vision, um, just a little retrospective. Um, well done on your assignment two. You guys just knocked it out of the park. And I, I think as as, but as, as you know, many of you really have taken a lot of effort in going through the steps, understanding what is needed, and you delivered. So, and you saw the result. Uh, fantastic, fantastic result. So keep up the good work. Um, do not uh, let go of the momentum in any, in any way, just a few more weeks and we'll be done. So keep up with the momentum. Um, week five, again, your discussions, spot on you guys again, uh, did a fantastic job uh, with the research, with the topic, bringing up your own, uh, you know, um, discussion points, your ideas, your thoughts. Um, very helpful. I, I think uh, you, you're making it really very engaging, um, and it you're making and you're encouraging me to really, you know, chime in and and uh, really um, also provide my feedback to you and also read through um, your um, your uh, post in much details. It was really wonderful to do that. Honestly, they, uh, I would say again, the best ever time I'm having uh, going through these discussions and especially the last couple of them. Um, and I'm being very honest with you. And I, 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 haven't, told, I haven't said this to many classes, um, but this has been by far uh, one of the best discussion weeks that I'm going through with this class. So please keep up the gold standard and uh, keep up with everything, okay, that you're doing. Uh, many of you continue to embrace the spirit, as I was just saying, you guys, you know, embrace the spirit of engagement, participation, um, you know, the way you interact with your, with your class, classmates, wonderful, okay, again, um, and, uh, but again, as, as I always say, there's always a uh, room to uh, improvise, room to do better, uh, we still have an opportunity to do better in this area, we can, you know, hit to that gold standard, right, uh, make sure that, you 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 just knock it out of the park again. Um, so one more discussion, and uh, and I look forward to that. Right for module four, um, take advantage of this webinar. So I hope um, in case you're not able to attend, folks are watching um, the recordings of of these sessions, and and I hope uh, they are being helpful. Uh, once again, I will look forward to any feedback that you may have to make these sessions really meaningful to you. I'm not doing this for the sake of guys. So please, if I could do this in any other way, if, if this, and to make this more meaningful, I'd be open to your feedback, 
honestly. So I'll be very objective. So you can speak up during this session if you're attending or if you're watching the recording of this session and you want to give me a feedback later, please do so. I will be open to it. Okay, so with that, as I said, with the computer vision, with the topic, I know, again, you are going through a lot of reading material. You're watching a lot of videos. Um, you're doing some research on the internet for your discussions and things of that nature. So I don't want to bring in any theoretical aspect again and, and go over that as, because again, uh, the topic that we are touching upon is, is so vast and so exciting in so many ways that I thought, again, I could bring to you um, some of the, and we can talk about or at least very briefly, I can introduce you to some of the most exciting projects uh, that are being, you know, going through or being taken, taken up in, in, in computer vision. And uh, I will have, you know, I have the links for each of these, you know, uh, projects or, you know, fascinating thing, exciting things that are going around. So, you know, you can just sit back, relax, listen, if you have questions, speak up. But again, you don't have to take any notes or anything of that sort. All the links are available in the deck. And uh, yeah, and then maybe there could be many things that I'm going to talk about that you may have already read, you may have already known, or you could have seen in the reading material or while you're researching on the internet. Um, so again, if that's the case, well, this could be a good refresher. It's good to see all of this kind of put together in one place. So you can come back here and look through things. Um, and most importantly, I, I'm as excited as you guys are because you are so close to getting to your capstone course and you need to be you know, knowing what are all those projects that are going on, all the data sets that could be there that you can get hands on to. Although you'll get a lot of that information uh, when you go into your into your capstone course, there's a lot of information about data sets, what to do, how you're going to you know develop it over the over the eight weeks period. Um, but again, I'm just kind of opening things up and and uh, giving you some references for that as well in case you want to do something different and to what level of details that you want to get into. Okay. So first and foremost, um, I don't know if you heard about this, uh, but there's a nice data set, uh, scale data set, um, where there are some open public data sets. Now, again, when you go to this link, or when you go to this website, um, it, may, it may ask you to subscribe. And those are like, that's for some very highly advanced data sets or some data sets that are not available publicly. But if you go under you know, resources, um, you will see public data sets. And there are many of them, hundreds and hundreds of data sets that, that are out there uh, with images or videos data set that you can get hands on to. So if you are interested in, in working on um, you know, a computer vision type project, um, you know, there could not be any better site that I can, I can mention to you about. Uh, and of course, Kaggle goes without saying that there are so many data sets on Kaggle as well. Um, that could be very helpful, which many of you may have already taken advantage of. So Kaggle and, and then Scale. And there's one more area that I would suggest is going to um, this Google DeepMind. And uh, you know there, there are multiple videos here that are available in YouTube videos that you can get hands on to for doing all sorts of analysis, all different types of projects that you want to build around. So again, take a look at this uh, Google DeepMind and uh, you know, and and there are so many things. It's not just about the data sets. I mean, they have been discussing about and the the um, you know some of the projects behind these data sets and some of the resources. There's so many scholarly articles that are out there that you can really some white papers that you can read here. So um, yeah, this is very rich websites that you could go to and and uh, read about and and also get hands on to the data sets. Okay. All right, so when we talk about computer vision, uh, no discussion about computer vision can be complete without talking about Tesla. Um, again, I'm, I'm not going to solicit for Tesla. I do not work for Tesla. And, and uh, I, I, I'm no way affiliated with Tesla except for saying that I, I, I drive a Tesla. That, that's all I can say. But having driven that, that's also, and I'm bringing in my own experience as well. But yeah, um, I, and I probably, many of you may already know, 
or you may have at least heard about it. Now it's, it's becoming so popular that these cars are around, many of these um, cars with the different cameras. And, and most importantly, Tesla is mostly talked about and it became more popular because of its introduction of this autopilot, right? The full, full, um, uh, uh, full self-driving, the full self-driving um, that was part of Tesla. And, and how beautifully, I mean, just think about from a technology perspective, right? I, I'm not talking from a business perspective. You, we, can, we, can, we can talk for hours from business perspective, how you know these um, some other cars could be different than Tesla and better than Tesla, all, all said and done. But um, I would say these guys are really pioneers in what the, the technology they have come up with. And, and I'm not talking about the battery or, or their you know, EV technology. Uh, forget all that. Let's not go into that deep. But even just purely from a full self-driving perspective, thinking that you can let the car drive you. And what is it really doing? Thinking of, you know, like it's millions of objects are passing by uh, while you're driving from point A to point B. And it does such a fantastic job. Again, that could be you know, some, some accidents, some things that people talk about and have, have experienced it. But other, I mean, if you think about from a holistic way, I mean, the way it does it, fantastic. I mean, I, 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 it's just unbelievable. It's, you just need to experience it and you will get to know the, the power of you know, how they've really used the power of uh, machine learning yeah, and, and um, the, the way they, they are having all the computing power that they needed. So again, um, the, the beauty of, um, you know, they're doing this without, you know, so from in 2021, Tesla switched to a vision only model, ditching the radar. So they're not using any radar technology at all. It's, it's just a purely computer vision and, and, you know, deciphering everything that is in front of the car, inside of the car, or back, back of the car, it, it makes all this decision making is being done after it views all these images, processes these images, and, and makes the next move. How cool is that? I mean, just, just think through how many images it processes in, in so many fractions of seconds. In milliseconds and microseconds, it, it is processing all these images and, and makes a decision of it, right? And, and all this is done by, you know, they have built uh, something called as HydraNet, which is an insane neural network. It's really insane, I would say, because they're running at least 50 neural networks are simultaneously built. And this is a special type of neural network that they have built, which is, you know, really, really optimized a lot. And, and using the computing you know, resources so very well that you can you, you see the power of the full self-driving, the power of computer vision at, at full display, right? When you're driving it, you're experiencing it or seeing a car go by, that it, it senses everything around it, right? And, and this HydraNet, um, you know, what is basically it, it is similar to transfer learning where you have a common block and, and train specific blocks for specific related um, tasks. You know, hydronets have backbones uh, trained on all different types of objects that are coming to it. And the heads are trained on specific tasks that it needs to do. So it's kind of divide and conquer. It's kind of doing things parallelly because there's nothing sequential, right? <laughs> if you're doing things in sequential mode, then you cannot have that kind of a, you know, a self-pilot or like an, an autonomous driving at all, that, that will definitely not work. And it's talking about the same um, technologies or, or techniques that you've learned all along and you've talked about, you know, like neural networks, PyTorch, deep learning. And they, this is all the, the, the things that you've been talking about, you, you've learned about. So it's using the same thing, of course, it's using it in a way that it, it's optimized, you know, there are multiple engineers, you know, put to play and they're working, you know, day in and day out um, to, you know, build these kind of networks that are going to be really, really helpful. And they're going to be completely precise. Remember, they have to be very precise. You know, five accidents that occur around at the same, you know, there's how many cars going on, you know, if they have multiple accidents going on, guess what happens? it's done, this, this, it's over, right, for this technology. Like for remember, if you remember the, the Concords, right? 
the Concords, you know, started off uh, so well with the technology that it had. It could drive at the, and it, I'm sorry, it could fly at the speed of sound and, and get to point A to point B, like New York to London. And everything was fine, but it land, it got into a few accidents and, and a couple of them were really bad accidents and which caused a lot of damage, a lot of damage, not to just to properties, but to humans as well. And of course, we lost many lives. And guess what happened? Concord is, is history now, right? Same thing could happen here. So if, if it's been working so successfully for so long, it, it, talk, it, talks, it, it tells us volumes of how precisely things have been done and then tested out, okay? And, and most importantly, you might wonder, how, how is it really working, right? Are they, what is it going on, right? I mean, because now you, you've been involved with um, all these kind of projects. You'll be doing your assignment where you'll do your data labeling part, which is, again, it could be time consuming if you have to do everything by hand. You have to label the data. You pass through a uh, classifier. We'll understand that, hey, if you've classified a dog like this and you've sent like 10 dog pictures, maybe the, the it, it can then understand how what the dog looks right so it needs to know certain things then it can predict that something is is matching what you've already fed so what if you're going to different places as i said there are millions of objects and that's where data labeling comes into play right uh, what kind of data lab labeling technique that you can make use of so what what Tesla does is is all that you know all the driving. So it it is not really going out and taking pictures all over the world, right? It's impossible to do that and to kind of get all those pictures and get all the labeling done, put it in the in the in the algorithm and 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 put it in the model and get the model trained. It's it's you know next to impossible task. So what they rely on are the people who are driving it. They are sending all these images, right? They are sending all the images of everything that this car is you you are seeing while you're driving the car, or maybe sometimes even what you are not seeing, the cameras around uh, your car is seeing it, and they're sending these pictures up, which is you know being used to you know label them in some way and in some automated fashion. It, it does it in a semi-supervised way. Semi-supervised is is nothing but a technique where you're not you don't have everything labeled. At, in in your in in your model, you have some images that are labeled, uh, and some that are unlabeled images. And those unlabeled images are are also labeled based on what is being fed, right? So it sees that there are hundreds of dogs images that you would have labeled. It looks at a, uh, an an image and says, "Oh, this is a dog." So I can I can label this as a dog, right? So it does that. That's called as semi supervised you know, kind of a technique that is being used. So this technique is being used to do all the kind of labeling uh, that it needs to do so that it understands all the different objects that you could go through. You know, maybe, as I said, 99.9% .9 of all the things that your car could be seeing, um, you know, the model would know about it or, or would have seen it in some way, not the same um, you know, part of the road or the street, but at least the objects that you could be seeing, the different types of plants, the different types of trees, the different types of houses, the different types of, you know, how the, you know, what different size of kids and, and, and size of, you know, your pets and everything, it, it would have seen it somewhere or it knows how to label it. And even if it has not seen, hey, I've seen a dog like this, which is completely different than anywhere in the world. But again, you could have a unique dog, a unique pet or unique animal, but that animal could be labeled based on some of the, you know, the past data. So again, um, I, I think this whole project and, and I've, I've put in the links here, if you get a chance just for the sake of understanding how it Tesla is, is doing this, and uh, you know, working on its 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 vision, it's working on its uh, technique. And besides, this is all besides the EV uh, and the battery and all that. You know that the technology that uh, Tesla has um, that it it boasts of. So let's let's not even go there. Let's stick to what the the topic area for us is and to learn to know about the computer vision in Tesla. Okay. Any questions? Or anyone has any experiences you want know, to talk about related to our topic here? 
Okay, I'll take the silence as no. All right, I hope you guys are with me so far. I have not put you all to sleep. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We are right <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Oh, next one um, that I could talk about is Facebook Seer project. Again, another project worth really reading about and checking. And this is a project where we. I just talked about um, uh, uh, the the not the self sorry semi supervised learning. This is going through a self supervised which means that it is making sense out of these images, which are not labeled at all. So how cool is that, right? These are unlabeled images, but just by the, the structure of the data underneath each image, it figures out what this image could be. And it, it annotates or it can then, you know, label it or whatever it needs to do. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's another cool uh, technique. Uh, that it's being used here and another cool project to really, you know, read about or learn about, um, which has been in use for quite some time. Okay, so that's that's Facebook uh, uh, seer for you. Um, next is um, open AIs, right? Open AI, we've talked about chat GPT all the time, but there's another project of, of open AI called DAL-E, which is creating images from text. And maybe some of you may have already tried this, and I'm I'm sure if you've been to OpenAI website or are known about or are found out about Dal E, you can basically type in any type of image that you want to create, any anything, right? And I just uh, gave you an example here, like uh, there were a couple of examples on this link here, which said a snail made of harp, a snail with the texture of a harp. Have you seen anything like that? No, nobody has seen it. The computer has not seen it. Maybe the computer or maybe your, your model knows what a harp is, model knows what a snail is. And now you are asking to put the two together and come up with a, a picture of a snail, right? A made up of harp. Then you have an armchair in the shape of an avocado, an armchair imitating an avocado. Look at that, how cool, right? So you could really, and, and this technology could be used in so many different ways. Think about it. I mean, sky's the limit again, guys. I mean, this is not just about playing with it, but you can probably get into designing things that people have never ever thought of designing or never been able to design just because of using the power of, so it's, it's kind of adding to your own creativity. So if you're in, in, in a finite kind of a fine arts kind of a field or an architecture kind of a field or designing, interior designing kind of a field, just think about that using, if you had this power with you, how cool would that be, right? You could design stuff. You could do the designing or any uh, decoration or interior, dec uh, in interior designing or architecturing or whatever you need to do. Um, you could work wonders with this kind of a technology. So it is just, you know, once again, it's a very similar to the GP, it's kind of a GPT-3 uh, kind of a, a model that it's using a version of GPT-3, which once again, you know, billions of parameters are fed to this model and being trained. So again, a cool technology. So if, if you are already become a big fan of chat GPT, you know, there's another open AI project that you could become a big fan of and people are already doing it. They're using this in so many different ways, okay? All right, next, um, then there are some GitHub projects that I want to introduce to you guys. And there, there are links there again, there are GitHub, it comes with its source code and all that stuff. So there's a lot of documentation and there's a source code and notebooks available. So there's a lot and then including all the, the, the you know, some of them also has got the, the white paper in there or the articles about it. Um, but this one again, you you may have probably seen some apps on on uh, now available on, on on iPhones or on on the Android phones where you know basically you can provide your picture and based on some celebrity or someone having a video, you can just superimpose that, right? Like for example, it's just giving here an example where there's a video, there's a, which is the driver video, the driver it's called the driver video, and the driver video here is is. Um, 
you know, is a, is our you know former president who is is probably giving a speech. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, giving a speech here, and then you in, what is on the on the top on the right top on the top right are all the still images that people are supplying, or it could you could supply, and then what that it turns that image that source image into using the driver video. It middle builds that it it shows that image is is saying the same thing and it is driving it's building it into a video now of that still image. How cool is that, right? And if you if you look at the source code, if you look at the technology, if you, if you go through the paper, you'll say, "Wow!" I mean, that it's it's not rocket science, honestly. Um, yeah, there could be few things that you may have to learn or or, or understand about it, or maybe there's something advanced. But there's not much that you would have to really, you know, go on and, and learn about because there's so many things that are there that you've already learned. You've known Python, you've learned, learned about neural networks, you learned about different types of techniques about, you know, uh, data cleaning and, and, and data, and all of that. You've learned it, right? Images, how to deal with images. You've learned all of that, all that, and it, it's pretty much there. So once again, um, this is a GitHub project. It's an open source. Take a look at it, right? Again, there are some some sample examples given here, like how it's being used in in different ways, right? Um, like for example, if you are going on the websites, you know where you would be shopping, and you would want to know how a particular dress would look like, right? And if a model is a, a driver model, a driver video of a model is given there, you could just upload your picture and it will show you how you would look with that dress and, and it you know, giving you all different, the way this driver video is, what the driver video could be doing. You, your image could be doing the same. It, it could turn it into your video. It would be as if you are in person trying the dress out. Again, how cool is that, right? So this is how these technologies are being used. And uh, if you look at the underlying code, that there would not be much. Of course, you need all the computing resources and stuff like that. But otherwise, yes, this is something uh, that you could also work on easily, right? It could be a project that you could take on. Um, okay, so, so another one, one cool project. Um, next is the other cool project is the video restoration. There's a lot, a lot going on. Um, as you can see, there's it's it's an industry of its own that is taking on this video restoration, like all the you know images of the past, the prints, uh, whether they are movie prints or you know personal movies or or things that have been um, captured years and years ago with the technology which doesn't match the type of technology of photography and videography technology we have here. But again, you can take that up and you can restore them to you know to the latest like as if as if it was clicked today right it, as if it was clicked yesterday or, or captured yesterday you could create those kind of beautiful videos and restore them um so it's it's beautiful again as i said this is an industry of its own and uh, again there's uh, you know this is a github project that you can take a look at the other um cool technique is um uh, the auto automatic colorization of images. If you've got a lot of black and white pictures or images, um, you know, how would you convert them into using, you know, colors of this? And again, you would think, oh yeah, this is deep neural network and, and you, you give them an image, it will apply, you know, it will apply uh, colors to it. But look at, if you look at, if you, if you closely look at these pictures, you'll see how, um, you know, it has taken the black and white picture and how different shades of color are beautifully, how it has used the different shades of color to build that colored picture. It has not just applied, you know, paint to it or, or colors to it, saying, okay, it's a ground, so we'll just apply green on it, or it looks like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, just a surface, uh, apply brown or light brown color to it, and trees, okay, we'll apply it green to greenery to the trees. See the different shading it has done, right? It looks real. It is. It looks as if when the picture was taken, it it would be like this. It makes you believe that. It makes you believe that the the actual uh, the vision our actual visual would have been like what you what you see in the colored picture. Uh, that's that's how that's the beauty of um, you know how precise 
um, this modeling technique or, or this deep neural networks have been, uh, the modeling has been used, the, or the model has been built that is doing this kind of a colorization. Beautiful. Again, uh, very good use of, and, and again, it's the same kind of technology that we're talking about, neural networks, right? Computer vision. This is exactly what we're talking about here. And again, the, the other thing that, um, you know, is, is about using it in the medical field. If we are going to be using it in so many different ways uh, for many other things, of course, medical field is, is again, going to be one of the biggest uh, uh, industry, the field that would really make use of the power of uh, machine learning, right? Power of uh, artificial intelligence. So in this case, it takes in all the, the pictures of retina and uh, it has got lots and lots of millions of uh, data, more than 30 million pictures of your retinal, you know, uh, different uh, pictures of your retina and showing, you know, whether the retina is of a normal patient, of a normal person or retina of, of a person with diabetes, whatever that could be. So based on that, you know, it has come up, uh, it has, it can now, it has built a model that can identify patterns of by looking at somebody's retina, you know, by, you know, whether they are going through or what kind of, what stage of a particular disease they could be having at the moment, it could really find that out. So again, an excellent um, you know use of technology here of of the power of deep learning and the power of computer vision has been applied. And again, you can read about that as well. The next is something that we all have been using so much, right? The text recognition, like you know, and like in in PDF scanners and Google Lens, it uses like what you you've written um that it can it can easily pick out or whatever is is you you've seen that it you can also pick up from the images the text from the images the same thing from the from anything that's written it can really understand what is being written here so again it's the optical character recognition um which you know you may have learned about it before but again it is a similar technique here you're using open cv library and then you're using ocr on an image uh, for this kind of project. Again, this is a GitHub project as well. And lastly, where we're using this kind of a technique is uh, for um, vehicle damages, right? I mean, now if, if you had been through an accident recently or you know, in any type, you know, any kind of a damage that you've had on the car, remember the old days, or maybe you know, you could have you could probably hear your uncles or parents or whoever talking about it, that that would be you know, it would take many days to actually just go through the process of understanding your damage. Like somebody would come over from the insurance company, take a look at your car, take pictures, go back. It used to be like, you know, a few days or, or a couple of weeks uh, kind of a thing here, a, a process. Now, the same process of as soon as you uh, you upload the pictures of a damage to a vehicle, in 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 few hours, in less than you know a couple of days or so, even in maybe in less than twenty four hours, you get the entire analysis, your estimate of this, you know, of your vehicle damage, and it all it does is again, there's a you might wonder as to hey maybe somebody's watching, looking at these pictures and making it, maybe they are referring it, but there's again there are some companies, these insurance companies are now using some very extensive and powerful models. That are looking at these cars, that they they know that this car is is a particular type, and and uh, you know class of car, and they have the same type and class of car, and what's the cost of the of each of the parts within the car, which parts could be damaged by looking at this picture here, and it it it, it uh, once it it make infers that it it understands that this could be the cost of this damage here. How cool is that? So by the time it comes on the desk of the person who is going to appraisal or go through it, they're just basically just reviewing it just to make sure there are no mistakes. So maybe it's just like one extra validation that they may be doing uh, before it, it reaches your hands, right? It reaches your inbox uh, with their analysis. But yeah, again, this is the same technology being used, right? Um, you know, image recognition, image understanding of what, what is being there, what could be part of that, you know, uh, pattern matching and all of that is being applied here, you know, using uh, Python libraries, using, you know, deep learning. 
and and of course some some heavy computation uh, that could be you know being part of it maybe you know some very advanced network with multiple parameters that could be applied here okay any questions i hope this was useful folks um and a good use of your time again and and uh, you know these projects hope they they encourage you or you know you got an excited to kind of uh, talk about or at least read about this project in little more details okay yeah absolutely it's been very fascinating so far okay thank you so um just food for thought again um as i as i always say you know how would you take your learning just think about it besides what we just went through just think about how you're going to take this learning about computer vision forward, right? It, it's a very exciting field. One of the most exciting today is if, if you think uh, chat GPT is one thing, you know, and but there's this computer vision is, is another. And as you just saw some of those fascinating projects, they are, you know, that's making this field much, very, very exciting. Uh, what's your plan to practice the knowledge and skills you have learned, right? Are you going to look onto those, some of those projects? Some of the other projects that could be there, which could be a little bit easier, but, you know, practice the skills and knowledge. Trust me, if you do not practice what you're learning, um, this will be all gone in a few weeks, right? All that. So please you remember to practice the skills you have gained may, and sharpen it, especially that you're going into your capstone course you need to sharpen all the skills that you've learned. Think about everything that you've learned throughout this last you know, couple of years or few courses that you've gone through um, before you embark on your journey to complete your um, final capstone course, okay, and your degree. And of course, you know, have you researched or if not research into areas where you can find images, videos, or text data sets, you know, for practicing your skills, okay? Right. So with that, uh, we'll go right into this talking about your assignment three. Um, so again, the assignment is, you know, is going to prepare you. This is going to be in the AWS Learning Academy. It's going to prepare you to load test data into AWS S3 to use it as one of the most popular big data storage solutions, such as Data Lake, and then make use of other AWS services, such as Amazon Recognition. So again, tutorial is, is very important, guys, and I'll, I'll mention that in the next slide also. But Amazon recognition is, is what you'll be using along with Cloud9, which is a development environment, to undergo the process of building a classification model using the training images provided, and then test the model to classify the unknown image from the data lake, okay? So you're going to label the data, you're going to fed it into a model, a classification model, and then you're going to, you know, you're going to test your model with the with the image that you've been provided that is not labeled. Okay. And you will have to submit the, your answer sheet. Please do not submit your assignment instructions sheet at all. You've got an answer sheet that only has space, enough space for only the uh, eight screenshots that you've been asked to provide, right? So all uh, when you're going through the assignments, you will be asked to provide or, or uh, the screenshots that you would have to really take it and, and make it as part of your, um, you know, part of your answer sheet. And a rubric is also available in the answer, you know, in, uh, not in the answer sheet, sorry, in the instruction sheet. The prerequisite, as I mentioned, is a tutorial that you just had during this, or uh, the last week of uh, the, the, the week six, I'm um, sorry, the week five of this one, which you just finished last Tuesday, it also had a tutorial, which many of you already, you know, passed through, but if not, you know, again, uh, this is this is a, one of the prerequisite, I would say, to understand what Amazon or no Amazon recognition is. And also there are some, you know, um, some videos that you can take a look at and some, you know, very, some very short videos to know what Amazon recognition is, how it is using to identity uh, to identify verification uh, or what's Amazon recognition identify verification or identity verification using Amazon recognition again another 30 minute video and there's also a paper at the end that you have to read as as prerequisite so please it's it's not much so take your time it's less than an hour's time that you can finish all your prerequisites for this week okay 
And as far as the input, so you got you got a file there, uh, which is called um, assignment three, build Amazon recognition model using custom labels instruction. I know it's a long name, but again, make sure that the assignment file has the July 2023 update uh, in it as part of the name. Um, we just uh, updated this assignment based on some finding that we recently had. So we were able to cut down a few steps, you know, just four or five steps that would have made a little confusing based on what was little, you know, some minor changes in AWS. So we made that change quickly and that an updated assignment has been uploaded on in the classroom. So if you have downloaded this assignment, you know, before, you know, a few weeks back or even a few days back, please uh, download it again and use the latest one, okay? Um, and there's another, there's a notebook, test recognition model dot, you know, I, uh, that IPython notebook that you want to da download here. There are data files to download. One is for the training data. The other is for test data. And then there's this answer sheet that I was just talking about, okay? Uh, as far as the rubric goes, for every step um, that in, in this, uh, uh, you would be asked. Uh, I mean, there's there's points for each of the steps, and for there are you know screenshots that you would be really taking for most of the steps that are listed here. You are going to be asked to provide a screenshot. Okay, that's what all these different eight images are coming from for your S3 bucket, for your image Amazon recognition project for labeling your, your images or, or showing that you created a model or showing that you're part of the cloud nine uh, environment and, and showing the result of your first image and the re result of your four images, right? So all that is, is going to be a package, uh, you know, that all the screenshots as you keep working on, remember to take the screenshots, okay? So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Uh, for assignment three, now we going to be ready for your questions. Anything that you may have for the assignment or for anything that I covered before, or anything for module three or in a course in general, anything that may be on your mind. Any questions? You said the the GitHub projects are going to be on the link, right? For the on the slide deck. Yes, okay. that's correct. Yes. I do have one question about the assignment. Um, I was a little shocked that my confidence ratings weren't exactly as high as I thought they were going to be. Um, there wasn't a big jump from from image one, to image two for cat, or especially for dog. It, there was hardly any of a jump. So I didn't know maybe something I could have done that, that could have caused that to happen. It was a seventy five percent confidence rating, the highest I got. So it was a little bit lower than the example on the assignment. Yeah, it, it, when the models are built, I mean, yet some of the parameters we are letting the um, the environment kind of, you know, take, use the parameters there. And so maybe that's why you, you get different results and it may not be exactly accurate, exactly the same as what the, the example would have shown. So it's quite likely that would have happened, but I, I can take a look at your um, your results again, just to, you know, make sure that I, I may have definitely seen, but it, I can see it, i watch it again, okay, whenever you post it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, sure. Good questions. Any other questions? None that I can think of right now, but I'll definitely be in touch. Okay, excellent, guys. Um, so again, so I kept my promise. Uh, we are in less than an hour. So I'll be able to give you exactly, you know, 14 to 15 minutes back to you all. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Uh, good luck with assignment three. And we'll meet again in a couple of weeks. Okay. Good luck. Take care. And good night. You too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.